Hi, I'm Sania, and I have really weird blood. So, you might have learned this in school, but normal blood cells have this biconcave shape where you can see dimples on either side. They don't have a nucleus, so they can transport more oxygen around the body. But my blood cells do have a nucleus, and this is called spherocytosis. Because this condition is dominant, if I were to have children, they would have it too. Now, people with this tend to have pretty normal lives. But people who don't get lucky with genetics, don't. Another blood-related genetic disease is sickle cell anemia, where blood cells take this crescent shape. It is estimated that around 34,400 people died due to sickle cell anemia in 2021 alone. 34,400. That is one year, one disease caused by mutation in one gene. There are well over 6,000 more genetic diseases and around 240,000 babies dying within their first 24 months of birth due to this annually. Now, what if I told you there was technology providing a solution to preventing all these deaths. And what if I told you 52% of Americans are against it? Genetic modification, technology that has been making headlines for years now, some of which seem quite negative, has been promised to be the solution to most of our genetic problems. This in CRISPR-Cas9, something you might have heard of, lets us edit and modify DNA, letting us insert new genetic material or correct mutations like the one causing sickle cell anemia from earlier. So if this has the potential of saving hundreds and thousands of lives, why are people so against it? First, the protest. In 2013, around 2 million people protested against genetically modified organisms, GMOs. It started not long after the first GMO product started hitting the shelves, and it started against as a march against genetically modified foods not being labeled as modified. But it then quickly turned against genetically modified food itself. People had questions. Does this cause allergies? Cancer? Will this wipe out local farmers? The streets were crammed, people were chanting, people also started ripping out GMO crops from fields, and overall, nobody seemed pleased. Now, 10 years later, and the health addresses were addressed. GMOs were proven to be the same for your health, like the modified counterparts, and they don't cause cow allergies or cancer. In fact, GMOs can be more nutritiously dense, helping reduce massive amounts of food consumption and ultimately reducing world hunger. As for the local farmers, local farmers themselves could benefit from GMOs with opportunities like increased crop yields and reduced pest damage. Genetically modified farms wouldn't be so new and scary. In fact, genetic modification itself is not so new. For over 30,000 years, humans have been modifying genetics to produce things like bananas, watermelon, and even your fairy friends through multiple generations of selective breeding and many, many years of work. But in 1973, scientists took the first steps to creating GMOs, and this is when it became easier. Instead of years to get drought-resistant crop, scientists can now do this in much shorter time, reducing the chance of famine. Crops and plants could be genetically modified to take in more CO2, helping reduce multiple Taylor Swift-level carbon emissions. <laughs> <laughs> Though I have to check my notes, I don't think that is physically possible. <laughs> the point is, genetic modification allows us to have so many opportunities and the opportunities are truly only limited by human creativity. Now, what happens when humans get involved? In 2015, a Chinese scientist modified three children said to be completely immune to one of the world's most deadliest infectious diseases, HIV. He was sent directly to prison, but this opened a whole new door to genetic modification no one knew could be opened or should be opened. 
It also opened a huge can of worms. People thought if it was so easy to genetically alter embryos for immunity, what's stopping scientists from genetically altering embryos however they please? Concerns for designer babies began to surfen. <laughs> babies genetically modified for aesthetic purposes. People can end up looking very similar if we started modifying aesthetics to what is stereotypically beautiful. There could be a huge divide between the richer West and the poorer East into two whole new species of humankind, modified and not. This new technology had everybody clutching their pearls, but is it really that problematic? What I can tell you is, just like memory storage and computers uses two bases, ones and zeros, Memory storage in life and in DNA uses four, A, T, C, and G. It is said that if you understand biology, engineering, and a bit of computer science, you can make up your own code. This means that the only thing stopping us from creating a creature straight out of Harry Potter is our knowledge, technology, and investment in this, which are all quite big barriers but it's not impossible. If land starts becoming scarce, we could genetically modify humans to be able to live underwater, like real life mermaids. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, wait, 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 Sonia, what happened to the dystopian future you were talking about earlier? And what do potential future mermaids have to do with me? First of all, you have to be devoid of a soul, not to be even slightly intrigued by fish people. Think of how much money Disney's gonna make when Little Mermaid live, live adaptation hits the cinemas. <laughs> <laughs> but all jokes aside, GMOs have immense potential to alter our now and our near future. Yes, it is important, just like with any science, we set in the correct regulations in place. It is important that we make sure companies are as transparent as possible with their processes. It is also important that we don't see genetic modification as a Western or Eastern issue. It is a human issue, one with no cultural barriers or borders. We must approach this technology with global cooperation and collective responsibility. Science is often scary. Just think of the world's first reactions to things like stem cell research, vaccines, and even electricity. What was once met with fear is now an important everyday part of our lives. What genetic modification needs to do is only change your physiology to equip you with better health. Your soul, who you are as a person, should not change, and altering that will not be encouraged. Some people might say that genetically altering humans is unethical. But there most probably will come a time in the future where are not genetically altering babies and ridding them of life-altering diseases will be thought of as unethical. So let's work together to break this taboo surrounding genetic modification. Let's work together to advocate for company transparency and addressing people's social and ethical concerns. Because maybe if we embrace this technology now, we could save hundreds and thousands of lives. Maybe if we embrace this technology now, someone giving their TED talk in 50 years will reminisce about a time in the distant past when some people had sphere-shaped blood cells. Thank you.